So when I finish uh, school and my father take me to the place, he's one of his good friends to learn how to sew. Learning there six, seven years. So, and then I open my shop and I start building my family. So, and I have my daughter, uh, 88, my first daughter. And 90, I have another daughter. So, and 94, I have another one. So, in 2001, I have another one. In 2006, and I have another one. Yeah, it's about five children I have. Kebe's shop is around the corner from my apartment. My mother found the shop when she visited us from Japan last spring. She was amazed by how much fabric Kebe carried and fell in love with his clothes. I wanted to make friends from my neighborhood, so I decided to document how he runs his business. Kebe is from Senegal, where his wife and five children live. Every month, Kebe sends money to his family. He makes money completely from his shop. So, but why do they wear these clothes? Like, who are your clients? Mostly the African-American. I have few white people coming too. So, and I make for the church gown too. And I have client for the dance like African dance, BAM. I have a client, I make for them clothes. So I have a lot of different clients. Do you think it inspires them to be in touch with the culture? Or? Yeah, because a uh, lot of black people, they feel like they're African too. And they want to be, go back to the culture. They want to represent to the culture. Even me, sometimes when I have, uh, I go to some ceremony, I wear my African clothes. Yeah. Two piece, you, want one piece. you see uh, the tab you like it and the skirt you like it somewhere else, you can do that too. Like this. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is covering. Or if you if you if you can. And this one you cannot see the dog or this one. Yeah, you okay. can't see it, but you can see like you still can see like an image of it. Uh, like this. Yeah. Just like this. Definitely. Um, is it a way where? Is it a way where? Um, when you stitch it, you don't have to stitch this part. Oh. Uh, like it could just be this and this. Okay, and maybe to glue it. Yeah. I'm gonna see because I'm gonna have to be iron. Yeah, close like that, yeah. How much do you ask him to, to make this one? Maybe about... 
The one is have a lot of pieces, that one is $10. $10? Yeah, the other one have two pieces, maybe $5. Oh. I asked him to patch my son's ripped pants. So you're you're a regular customer. You told me about yes, the, about of this store. Okay. Yes, yes, I am. Okay. <laughs> um, well, basically, okay. I've known him for about ten years now. So I started coming to him. Actually, a, a friend of mine got a lot of clothes. It was uh, dance in West African dance uh, from uh, Guinea, yeah. and they told me about him. So even though I know he's from Senegal, so I said, okay, well, I'll check out some of his clothes. And then from there, I just started getting outfits made. So when I either, you know, danced in Sabah doing Senegalese dancing or just for like a wedding or ceremonies or just for casual wear, I started buying, purchasing outfits from them. So I try to get some of these twice a month. I try to get, you know, some outfits. Does the costume transform you in some way? Or is it like, why do you choose to wear this? Uh, first, I... I did it to try to connect more with Africa itself, you know, as far as you know the, the dress. And at first, I, I figured it transformed me, but after a while, no, I just realized just I'm African descent, no matter what I wear. But I do enjoy wearing the traditional wear of specific countries, you know. So it, it does have some type of connection. So this really functioned as like a cultural hub for you. Yes. You came to see like the Senegalese news, the Senegalese Tea, the food, like after they take a break, they'll go get some Senegalese food and you just, they, at least as far as these two are concerned, they continue to do the things they did in Senegal, you know, as far as tradition. We all sit around, take a break, we eat from the same plate, do all those type of things, so that's nice, yeah. you know. This area right here, you know, they're very decent people, so they try to keep the cultural thing happening as much as possible. When you mix, njahas that mean mix to mix it. <laughs> and I do every year a dance conference in Manhattan, and Kebe is our tailor to make the costumes. You come here every two weeks. Every two or three weeks. Something, something like that. Yes. It's all something different. <laughs> No, I'm not doing no movements. It's not a class. I'm just wearing it just to show her. Okay, just like this. You see? And then you put the left side in, and then you put the right side on top. You see? Then you tie. It's that so way you beautiful. can dance with it. And See? it's open in the bottom so that you can move yes, you can more move. comfortably. Yes, more comfortable. Mm. 
Yes. Oh, I know Kebe for a long time. That's more than 15 years now. Yeah, I'm looking for you get off Kingston. Yes. From Senegal. You knew Senegal. Yes. Yes. Well, I know in Brooklyn they have a lot of tailors. Yeah, around Fulton Street they have a lot of tailors. But since I know Kebe for a long time, I prefer to come to him. Yeah. It's wonderful to have a place like this. Yes. Back home, we always like this, friendly with the people, because I grown up with the big family. Uh, anybody have problem, the other one is coming help. Always we use, we do that. Not only like I know you, we friendly, so we have to help each other. Not only for the money, like when you do this business, you don't look at for money too much, because if you look at for money too much, you be losing. You have to build a client and friendly force. So anybody you make for them nice, everything, and they come back. So that's what that's the way you're looking for the client. I thank God for me. Uh, everywhere I go, I can meet good people. Some of clients, I know them five, six years. Some of them, I know them ten years. They keep coming.